Get ready. It's time. Christina, Catherine, Lisa, Amy, and Lauren. Welcome to the Cimarelli Podcast. Hey, I'm Christina. I'm Catherine. I'm Lisa. I'm Amy. I'm Lauren. And, and we're Cimarelli. Welcome back to the show. Woo! Oh my gosh, she stole Welcome my back. line. So today we're here. I'm getting crumbs everywhere. Who knows what? What are we? Well, we're, today we're talking about hard, exactly. bad things. Going. We're talking about failures, struggles, ugly internal feelings, Ugh. tough times, down in the dirt. Do we Who really need you to? When can we skip? Down? Kath and That's, I did it last time. Yeah, yeah can we, we just to. skip? What? It was good. You can skip. It wasn't even bad. The door. You can just say, like, sheet. well, I couldn't sleep one night. I've never struggled. Well, two I mean, really like, inspired. Struggles? This that is two mine. types of people because Kath and I were like, Ready to go, I feel. And then you three are what all like, wrong with do you? I have to do this? Yeah. What is wrong we like talking about Because we like to share more personal things in a lot of ways than you guys. I they like have a get problem away from me. with oversharing. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> they really just don't overshare that So today's going to get heavy. Just kidding. It's gonna. It's still going to be a great show. Don't tune out. Look, I almost tuned out <laughs> of a video. bad. Let me tell you, I tuned out of a video the other day. It was way too heavy. I was very, very disturbed for 48 hours after. But you know what? I still was glad that I watched it because <laughs> wait, there was wait, so much too. goodness in it where I was like, wait, oh, what are you talking about? I'm not wait, even going to say it. I don't want to be disturbing. But anyway, oh, no. God bless him. So... Let's get into the um, show, intrigued. episode oh. 4,963, talking about an alien invasion. Yeah. Yes. Okay, guys. Who built so the pyramids? It's episode <laughs> 114. <laughs> Wait, my real question is, why does my, this is very specific, why does my kneecap get sticky every time I sit here? Because <laughs> there's tape I just residue under the table, to Lisa. scratch my knee, and I was like, what's this? Is there this? tape residue for under the table? It's got to be. Okay, interesting. Ooh. So now That's you know. Good to know. So guys, this uh, is episode one fourteen. We have one hundred and thirteen <laughs> other episodes. Which I cannot believe that's real. That's Seems fake, wild. But okay. And if you want all of the full episodes, you have to go to our Patreon, which is linked in the description. Um, we only post half of every other episode on YouTube, and then you get the full thing on Patreon. Also, it's a great way to support us if you really believe in Cimarelli, our vision. Or anything is possible what we're doing. If you just believe. If you want to support us, it's also a great way to do that, and we really appreciate it. And also, if you want a positive community and a bunch of other content from us, we do like personal like Q and A's, and we, we react to your ask, comments. Answer your questions. You we submit talk to it. You guys. We answer it. So yeah, check out Patreon. Try it for a month. See if you like it. You may love it. You may. So last um, last episode we did. Um, Kath and I we started this. Um, topic, which is oh, our, you were six, it's like you our biggest here. like I challenge. Was there. Yeah, she was. I thought it was I an alien invasion. Just oh my gosh. Oh. Anyway, never mind, it never was mind. like our biggest challenges, challenges how we failures, obstacles, whatever, bad things, and Ooh. how we overcame them. Guys, that just bad, 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 bad. It was bad. fun. It's good to do. It no, was I'm fun. Saying it's a bad fun thing. for you. Yeah, I'm glad it was fun. I didn't know it was gonna be so dramatic. Because when Kevin did it, it wasn't. Oh, so uh, I didn't I think about that. Such a cool. Uh, I did not I think about so that. No, I just didn't emotions. realize that people wouldn't like that. Like it didn't even. It's true. Oh, true. Dismissive, so avoidant yeah, attachment. I walk Ever around in a bathing suit. So let's start with our highs and lows. Let's start with our highs and lows. Okay. Who's the week. going first? Not me. Why? Okay, I'll go. I'll go. She'll go. My low was. Sounds like you're saying someone's sick. And I still feel residually sick, kind Ooh. of. Like, I feel, like, dizzy and Oof. stuff. That sucks. So that was my low. I laid in my bed for, like, a week straight. Which you would think I would love that, right? No, because I was sick. I <laughs> didn't feel good. Because you didn't choose it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're Even if you chose it, though, I feel like you, you don't. You get bored um, after a while. Maybe. <laughs> um, and my high was that my boyfriend oh, girl. came to see me. Wow. Oh. <laughs> that was it. No more oh details for you no guys. No more details for you. Get out. As Lisa, what would Lisa say? Get out, you, you skeevy, skeevy little pervs. <laughs> <laughs> As if that's appropriate. <laughs> Just get out. Lisa says that for everything. Yeah. Like <laughs> seeing your elbow or something. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I guess I can go. <laughs> um, okay, this is not good. My low. I wonder if I even need to say it differently for you two because it's like violent, actually. What? Because no. it was a dream. Don't use words yeah, that are. My yeah, my low. This it. is a real low, and you guys can be like, whatever. But when you're 
some people when they're pregnant for me this is true can have really um what's it called nightmares um, vivid dr- vivid dreams oh my gosh Don't I, I had those one. i hate it was really when bad. When they're bad. So my <laughs> low is actually from last night. This is a real low, okay? Because it ruined my whole night of sleep because I, I was so stressed. Okay. Yeah, it's horrible. So I dreamed that my sister-in-law, who also like babysits Barrett a lot. <gasps> oh, was, no. Um, oh. Poked. Poked me with a <laughs> knife. And then she was like really, really evil. <gasps> so then Did I had to, to aggressively child? attack her <gasps> with oh a K-I-F-E. Oh. And it felt so real oh, because I so had scary. to fight for my okay, life. That's I've really had dreams scary. like that. wouldn't die. Where you oh. have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a live someone. She wouldn't D-I-E. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to. Don't even really spell it. They're, they're like aggressively. Okay, so she anyway. She wouldn't end. That it was so intense. That divergent when they're in the dream thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This it was so real. intense. So when I woke up, I was whore. I wasn't like, oh, it's just a... A dream. I was like, <gasps> and yeah. I was so like upset about it. I was so mad. Whatever. I was like, what the heck? And then I was like stressed for like the rest of the night. That was like three or two a.m. when I woke up. So it ruined the rest of my night's sleep, and it really disturbed me because I don't want to do that. Yeah. It felt real. I hated it. Yeah. It was horrible. And she kept like coming back to life, basically, and just it was bad. that is horrifying. I just yeah. have to look at it and say, what does this represent? Because then I can detach from it. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what on earth. But anyway, we won't get to that. So that's then I didn't ever ask my therapist. Before. I'm like, why am I oh, dreaming about this? She's like, oh, it sounds like blah blah. I'm like, oh. That's I not heard so it's bad. About, like betrayal, but I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe you feel like you betrayed yourself. What does that mean? Well, that's what I learned. People is in like, your dreams represent something about you. Yeah, yeah that's true. So you figure it's out weird. what she represents. So you don't have to put it I on think that. Person. The bottom line was, I have to journal. Is what mm-hmm. I was telling you. Yeah, yeah. I haven't journaled in a couple. Did weeks. you tell her that you had that dream? <laughs> yeah. And she's like, what? <laughs> so anyway, that's what. Wait, no. Did I tell her? I can just see her face. I care if I told her. I think I did. So anyway, that's annoying. That's what I get. And my what I get for being pregnant. Is that? Um is that technically i can be in like this yeah i can be in the single digits here of weeks oh. yeah for when i have this child could be in the double digits but it could be oh. Yay. Oh, i mean so it excited. definitely could be in the single you definitely because you're what 31 31 weeks could. so it could be eight Yay. so yeah that Love is it. really exciting but Love now i'm like oh my gosh it. i have all this stuff to do so i'm gonna try to do everything really early you're like staying at the blank i'm gonna page i'm gonna pack the hospital bag really soon Good. Yeah, a lot of people it. wait till later. I'm just gonna do it. Right Remember no, when we just were do doing it. that at your house, and then you went into labor that day. Oh yeah, that's when we packed it. <laughs> we I remember were being at your a house. bunch of stuff, and yeah, like, you were like, yeah, you were like this, stuff. <gasps> like waddling I very was, slowly. I was vacuuming and sitting. Yeah, down. you were doing something, and we and were then, like, like doing it again and sitting down. Oh, we were helping you with your nursery. We were setting everything up, <gasps> and then I literally and that night went into labor that night. I was at the gym. Okay, so anyway, that was wild. I wonder if that made it happen. The fact that you vacuumed. No, well, no, that's part of it. Oh my gosh, that's why he loves it. Her son is is so excited when he heard, (laughs) he's like, I gotta get get out of here. I gotta get that Ah. vacuum. Okay, okay, next person. (laughs) All right, so let's see. My low and my high are connected. They're a two-parter, but they are not connected. Does that make sense? Connected in content, not connected in timeline. Oh, no. (laughs) So (laughs) my low was, it was... The end and the beginning of my cycle, you know, uh-huh. going into a new one. So I was a little bit, what? a little widow de pussy. <laughs> you were not. <laughs> well, I'm confused. Yeah. It was when? You were not. The end and word. the beginning of my Fiery cycle. You know what I mean? As you are usually, I feel. It's the sugar. It's the sugar. Yeah, normally oh. you know you Wait, know. what? Oh, okay. when I don't, when I eat sugar, you know everything about my hormone cycle. When I, I don't, can tell. you don't. Oh. The second she arrives, Let me I'm tell like, you oh. that I had not a single cramp. Not a <gasps> single cramp. Wow. Not at all. It's okay. magic. Can you keep so up anyway, with this? <laughs> anyway, anyway. It's great. It, I'm, go- I'm going into my period, okay? And I was very <laughs> sad. And I think <laughs> what happened was, listen, it doesn't mean nothing's real. Oh, sometimes it does. Like I cried over the Michael Jordan documentary being filmed out of order. I didn't actually <laughs> care about that. But sometimes it's very real. And that it's was just a good documentary. Heightened, okay? Yeah. So what I, I was feeling like was very real. Is just heightened of like mm. out of touch with myself. No time for me. Mm. No time to reflect. And I felt like, it, this is so weird. I felt like I was objectifying myself because Mm. I was making my life everyone else's. Mm. So not in like a 
just like in a way of like I'm an object like a lampshade like yeah. I'm not a person who gets to come oh, yeah, first in my own life it's yes a good one. so I realized that and I was like I didn't come out of it I was just like oh and I was just really really upset then a few days later ding today um uh, first of all, Lily slept for 12 hours straight, which she Ooh. never does. Like, <gasps> did not wow. get up until 8 o'clock. I was like, oh my gosh. So I slept for nine hours. That Whoa. was in itself amazing. Oh. But then That's I amazing. woke up before her at like 7.15. I was like, oh my gosh, uh, where is she? And I was like, oh my gosh, she's sleeping. Last time she slept for a long time. So I went, was well, she still sleeping at 7 o'clock? Who knows? So I went outside. I sat on my deck with the baby monitor. I'm not a psycho. Like I had, I was watching her from afar, and I journaled, and I was like, "Girl, you're amazing. So you better like, you better rock Some it. Time. You know, you and you're amazing for you the re- rock. not for the reasons people think you are, Troy. Like, <laughs> you say, that crazy. sounds like an early 2000s movie. Like, you better rock. That it. is my life. So that is, I was gonna say that I really Lisa's came life. out of it, Aww, and I, I felt that. so good, and I was like. Oh, Look at you! Right, uh, being a morning person. I feel like yeah, it's reflected so. in your outfit today. I mean, yes, you watch it. it and feel I was like, like a morning. This person. is the vibe. No, but I. Well, I don't know. I'm just. I read that. Um, I read this cool thing that, um, it is like a biological thing, whatever. That people are night people and morning people for survival, so that. Um, different people be like awake at different times oh. of the night to fend off like wild animals. What That's the so hell? Cool. They're like, if you force night people to be morning people really early, then you're like force them to live in like jet lag all the time. Oh, That's no. So See, true. but I feel good when I go to bed early and wake up early, but I also feel but what fine. Is early to you? 10 o'clock, 9 oh. o'clock. But you said 7. I, right. Yeah, I wake up at 6.45 after going to bed at midnight and I just deal with it, but oh, I hate it. Right. Mm, yeah, that so I right. shift earlier because of her. <gasps> anyway, so basically I just fell out of touch with myself and then got back in touch with myself. Mm, love it. Love After it. a good night's rest, which also I was very tired when I was having the bad time. It all comes back to sleep. Mm. Ugh, being that tired sweet, is sweet, sweet sleep. Mm. <laughs> okay, <laughs> next. Who, wait, is who it hasn't it? gone? It's you or me. Oh, you can go. Okay, um, let's, let's think. Okay. Um, Okay, you we'll do a so simple high for a simple man. Um, I learned that my natural hair is great. So yes. that's a real high. Wait, how it would you know this is my natural that. hair. What do you normally do? Because she brushed it. The number one. Oh, the you, mean, you mean texture. Not do. Oh, yeah. every day color. she would brush it? Yeah. yeah. Don't you and feel brush like it like out of the shower? Um, I should. I don't know no, what to do. I would know about this kind Only of if you have like really I want to try um sea salt spray, but this is just scrubby and nothing's in it. Uh, the curly girl method and see but what happens. I don't know what you do if your hair is oily but also wavy because well, all the curly girl stuff is yeah, like is big oily like hair oil and leave it no, 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 no. your hair's not curly it's no, just it's wavy just wavy. no no you would just not put that right on your roots so yeah, you just yeah, it just ends. looks like you put it on your ends, ends. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but also I think you're talking yeah. about products that are hydrating for thick coarse yeah, you curly don't hair yeah, you no, don't need that you just get like scrunching gel yeah you do that Okay, whatever. Yeah, you're right. good. Yeah. So, Sounds love good. It. That's your um, high. Yes. Ooh, a glow um, is that I dreamed that I had a tussle with my mother. A tussle? See? And then Dreams I woke can up ruin and your that day. day I had a tussle with my mother. Oh, you were so triggered. <laughs> okay, so mine big. better not. <laughs> do you think the dream caused it? Or do you think no, it just was, she caused it? It was a premonition. No, no it wasn't a premonition because it was a completely different thing. When you say tussle, I imagined like punching. But it was just like a little bit a of verbal. a verbal tussle. Okay, verbal. And the one in real life was like way a, less than the one in the dream. But the dream was so vivid, it felt like I really had a tussle with my mother. And then I really had a tussle with my mother. Wow. And then That's Lauren wild. had a chat with me, and then we chatted. <laughs> and then she said, It's time to stop being America's sweetheart. Be America's worst nightmare. And I was like, <laughs> Okay. Whoa. <laughs> and then Acacia said, Maybe America's sometimes nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> and then I said, mm, I don't know. I like America's nice wor- or worst nightmare. <laughs> nice so we're going to do that. <laughs> America's okay. nice work there. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of sound like America's next on while anyway. Okay, Kat? America, America's work. Last that, one. That's what it like. America's work. Okay, um, I don't really have my life's not that interesting right now, honestly. <clears throat> I was trying to I was trying to dig for some highs and lows, and I was like, I'm not really thinking of anything. Um, I, would, I just kind of like neutral neutral um a low last night was that i think i slept less than five hours <gasps> total yeah. because no. my twins were tag teaming it and not sleeping oh. all night my longest stretch was three hours oh. and then the rest of it was just like that hurts 
So yeah, I'm kind of asleep right now. Oh, they're not like in tune when they wake up at the same time. No. They got to get it together. No. Yeah, they, they need are... to sync up. <laughs> they do sometimes. They've been sleeping pretty good for the most part. And then last night they just threw me a curveball and I don't know what it was. So I'm very tired. Um, I would say one of my, okay, well, I have multiple highs. But I'd say one high, with, it's like ish. You know, they're all just kind of like chill highs. It's not like, ooh, I yeah, climbed yeah. a mountain. Um, I would say a high has been that my husband's been home every night which has been really nice because his work schedule changed. Ooh, so we've been getting good. to do bedtime together every night, which I really that's love. Nice. I just It just feels so complete when it's the four of us. Like when it's me, just imagine like when I'm by myself putting the twins to bed, just imagine like this cave woman <laughs> with her hair on fire, <laughs> running around, getting chased by a lion. Like that's basically oh. how I feel when I'm doing bedtime by myself. If you've ever had two babies that you have to feed solids, clean, change diapers, get bottles, bring them both upstairs one at a time, put them in their sleep outfits, read to them, and then put them to bed and get them to actually fall asleep by yourself. At the end of it, you're like, oh my gosh. You just like lay there and you're like, okay, I'm alive, I'm still alive. So anyway, I usually do that like a couple nights a week and it's very stressful. So yeah, it's nice having him home. That sounds like a pretty good high. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's like, been good. He's been, yeah, he's been doing that for like every night for almost a month now. Love it. So oh, it's like I thought nice. you just spent a few days. Wow, that's no. great. Hey, but then he's working tomorrow night, so I'm like, mm, oh, screw so that. I have to do it tomorrow. So I'm, <laughs> I'm bracing myself. Ooh. Maybe it'll be good better. Luck. Yeah, okay. just imagine these two twi- twins going, Wah! and then like rolling around in their cribs and then being like, Wah! and you're like, <laughs> and you're like jumping back and forth trying to pat them. <laughs> Like, it's okay, it's okay. I was okay. doing the electric slide. And then as soon as you pat the other one, the other one gets mad and starts yelling at you, like, get back here. And you're like, okay, I'll be back in a mm. second. So, yeah, that's bedtime Oof. for the twins. So, good times. Maybe you should put their cribs like this so then you can I be just, like, in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anywho. Okay, let's oh, yeah, go to the five the perspectives. Like, Ooh. Here's the question. Oh, I have a great question for this, by the way, for oh. the future. Tell me it so I can put it on the thing, or maybe send it Or to you me. can just do it today if you want. No, just kidding. All right. You can do it for the next one. Okay. Yeah, I have one. I just thought of one. Don't I was like, forget oh, that's a good it. question. We'll do it for Write the next it down. one. Okay. I, no, I have it in my brain. Okay. How often, we didn't do this one, did we? How often do you redecorate your house or room? Ooh, uh, um, like every two years. Wait. Re- my room? Wait, redecorate? Never. Or one year never me and chad <laughs> living together so far we have done it once a year <laughs> yeah he gets so restless he'll just start rearranging the furniture it's because it's the same stuff but like oh. the front room oh. we got built yeah, in that's, that's what we i do i rearrange it. stuff that i already have we moved oh. he has like he got some chairs in from his storage unit in la yeah, and like move them into things. the front like it's not a overhaul oh, but everything's okay. moved we got all new chairs and table in the kitchen brand new bored. couch new rug. The same thing. yeah hmm. and Forever. we made our room but that was when i was pregnant i was like i hate this room <laughs> <laughs> and then i was like you know it was kind of cute before <laughs> i don't know why i hated it so much i made it all like neutral and white i was like no color like I almost got rid of all my fun color for clothes when I was pregnant, and then hmm. I became unpregnant. And I was like, "What was I thinking?" When oh you my she God. says her nails are two different. I know. Colors. I didn't. I hated this. I was like, <laughs> "I just want neutral brown." I was That's not so weird. weird, and I hated my cats. That I was like, so "Get away from me!" Now, as soon as I stopped breastfeeding and got those hormones out of me, I was like, <gasps> "So weird, oh, kitties! I love you again." It was oh, so maybe weird. Maybe it was like a protective thing. Yeah, yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> Well, I think it was like I only have a small amount of love to give. Yeah. And I'm giving it all to Lily and Chad. I can't, I can't stretch myself anymore. Stop mm-hmm. nuzzling me. But luckily, Chad so did enough for the both of us. But now we're, I'm back. Um, I don't really know. I don't really redecorate that often. I feel like you're like every four years. Yeah, <laughs> it, it becomes a problem because sometimes I have done the thing where. I don't know if anyone else does this, where you try to like recreate your room in a new room when you move, but then that's bad because it trips your brain out and it's not good. Because your oh, brain yeah. gets you so confused. I didn't even room. know you could not do that until Chad. <laughs> I thought you get what you have and you have it forever. That's and what I thought. I thought too. But that's like when you and go to Christmas, someone's like parents' house in and it like looks like it's stuck in like the '90s or something. Yeah. it's like they never redecorated. <laughs> well, because our mom wasn't like redecorating all the Decoration time, like nation. ever. No. And she wasn't like, "Let's do your room." So we just kind of had the same thing. My room was like a storage unit. I just would redo where things <laughs> needed to be in my there. My one sliver of the room that I shared. Yeah. You got I'll that redo 
on well, yourself. I had redo my bed. I had a like you were like space bored with that. planet yeah. rug that was, that was blue. It looked straight up like a boy's room. <laughs> yes. And then a Hawaiian rainbow lay hanging on my bedside. <laughs> and then an Allie and AJ poster. That was the extent of my interior decoration. <laughs> oh, I was so excited. Wait, to have was my that for we shared a room or after? In the room. All right, guys. Let's no, let's I clearly remember that. I haven't answered. I was just gonna say. Get to these that I don't stories. really know how to decorate. I need Lauren to help me. You do though. Your rooms have. Well, yeah. Your room has always been like. Yeah, nice. you have a zhuzh. I, okay, yes, I do, but it's very <laughs> you girly. You mean like the whole house? The problem is my style is very girly, and Max is very like. Oh yeah, um, like masculine, I, I guess. Like masculine decor. So it's like I. What do you want? Like I don't antlers? know what to do, and we also have <laughs> yes, some Lisa. kind of mental block about hanging things on our wall. Oh that my god! It took us two years to hang stuff. We didn't hang anything, so our house is kind of blank. We have a few mm. things hung. We have a lot more that's just been sitting there for like years. So mm. I don't really decorate in the first place, I guess, that much. So I don't know. Because decorating is it's hard. It's hard. a commitment. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go to these. Are I just keep dive thinking, in. Dang it, we need to get to these because there's three people telling Look, them. Look, Lauren you know, and Lisa and I are not as, very um, what's the word? long-winded, loquacious. Ugh. Wait, is verbose loquacious. the long or the verbose short? Verbose is Verbatim. an insult. So what? It's like long-winded in a bad way. Mm. Loquacious is, I, I think, so. generally. It's, it's got a negative connotation. Using or expressed in more words than are needed, I guess. Mm. Yeah. It's so, kind of okay. like people I feel like use it as a bit of a dig. I was going to say not yeah. as verbose as us, but maybe we would use more words than were needed. But were like they Maybe you are verbose. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, that's what I said. Yeah, no, that's, this is that's a joke. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's called comedy. So yeah, it's called comedy. When I'm looking Shall at we my start? life, yeah, I'm let's not start. Yacht. Lisa, go first. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to do it? I'm not going to think oh, yeah. about how much money well, I made. I'm going to think about my comedy albums. All right, we have yes. a few questions Obviously, like last time so that are leading the outline. Who is... Yeah. Who's running the interviews? Kath wanted to. Oh, I thought you were switching off. Okay. All right, so, Lisa. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to our show. Oh, well, 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 um, it's good to be here. My first question for you <laughs> is, what is your most... Is it really most <sighs> devastating failure or obstacle or challenge? Easy. That you've been through. Um, the worst time of my whole life was just recently in December. Um, <sighs> my husband didn't wake up. <laughs> he almost died. Um, or am I just supposed to summarize it, right? The, the yeah, worst thing yeah, we'll was... Yeah, we'll go more into like, different yeah, aspects. The worst thing was when he didn't wake up and I had to call 911. Sorry, I feel like I'm in a jokey mood still. I'm like, call 911 before I'm CPR. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, really bad. That was not the vibe. Yeah, it was not the vibe at all. I was like, ah! Everywhere. That's so scary. And then um, we found out he had an enormous tumor in his, growing off his adrenal gland into his liver. So crazy. And it was like, it was like a dark entity, like running his body and eating all his blood sugar and dragging his blood pressure up through the roof. And he almost died like six times apparently, which I'm really glad they didn't tell us until way after the fact because I didn't want to know that. I was like, everything's great. <laughs> We're pushing towards the finish line. Mm. Didn't know that. Oof. Anyway. So that was so, nice be with the low yeah, point. that's what I was going to say. So what was the low point of that experience? Okay, the low point, I believe, was Wednesday because on Sunday it all happened. On Monday, he they found out the tumor was there and I think Monday night it was diagnosed. And then... Tuesday or Wednesday, he was transported up to like the big hospital. But I remember <sighs> this was a time when Lily was like actually sleeping really well through the night, even though she was like five months old. So every night she wouldn't wake up, which was nice. But then I would just be up with my thoughts. And mm. during the day, the doctor was there who was just like pumping us full of inspiration. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna remove it. You're gonna live. You're gonna go home for Christmas. Like Such there was no doctor. question. Yeah, what a great doctor. But then I would go home and be like, oh, but what if? What if? And some people die in surgery, even though mm. I never even heard of that before. Apparently that's a thing, but I didn't really. That's not like a belief that I hold, but for some reason, like a few people mentioned that, and then I was like, oh no, what if? And like, what if I'm a widow? Like all these things that I was not told and wasn't supposed to think, but then they just started creeping into my mind. So I called my brother Alex at like three in the morning. I was like, are you awake? I really Alex. need help. Wow. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I'm here. And we talked for like oh, two hours. Well, and Alex. Was, I never thought what an angel. Oh my gosh. Alex, Alex was the Alex best, is the best person, person to talk that to. That is so, Alex it was is so great. Amazing I have to talk called to. Alex a few times Such in a life. Not yeah. like that kind of thing, more like something that we're both in that I want to talk about. 
about that's so true if you want to talk Ooh. about something in in depth it was someone, so great God. well he was just so like emotionally present and like Aww. i'm here like he wasn't mm. like oh i have to get up in the morning he just oh alex stayed up with me till like four so or wow. shout I out to too. alex yeah. we never talk about guy. him on the podcast ever i know we love alex. a great man a great little brother shout out to you alex. so he stayed up with me and helped me through it but i just i went i took a sleeping um melatonin thing gummy went to bed at 11 and woke up at 12 and did not sleep again until 10 right, p.m the right. next day i was like because i was freaking out so wow. much i like couldn't sleep so i was just Oof. up all night i took a shower tried to like calm myself nothing worked but that was the low point because i really lost my belief for a minute of like god's got us everything's gonna be okay during the day i knew that i don't know why i just knew it in the doctor too do you think the or? doctor and and god himself i just felt all of this confidence and then at night i just would like i was so tired and strung out i've been pumping everyone up all day like this what's going on this, we're gonna get through it like this and everyone i was like the contact for everyone mm. oh. i feel like i carried like 12 people through that wow especially me chad and his mom we were like i was lifting everyone up the hill and mm. i could do it but then at night i was like well, and you also had Lily to take care of, too. But uh, like, luckily, so other people cr- were watching her, like, all day. And mm-hmm. she was so easy at night. So it wasn't a big stressor on me. And, like, some mornings I would stay home with her. And she would, the, his mom would go to the hospital. So I would just be, like, bonding with her. And that was a nice thing. Mm-hmm. But, it's yeah, it's good. crazy that you went through that whole Ugh. thing with a five-month-old. Yeah. Which you're, you're still early in the postpartum experience, too. That's so that's, like, I really stopped, vulnerable that's time. That's why I stopped oh, nursing. Because I was, like, my supply was too wacky. There was too much stress. And I was, like, this is just... I gotta let this go. That's so crazy. Yeah, it's crazy that you say that <gasps> that, that was like the lowest point because I feel like to our family you seemed so positive and strong. I was you know? when I would talk to you, but then yeah. when I would at then night you, I was like Ugh. So that's the point where you felt like you like lost hope? For a night, yes. Okay. I did. So that leads to the next one, which is what was the turning point when you realized that things were going to turn around? Well, it was it was like this. There was a bunch of them. Like, first in the hospital, I was like, oh, whatever. We'll probably... (laughs) We checked in. I was like, we'll probably be out of here in a few hours. Eh, Two weeks. So when we realized he was staying the night it was like uh, okay it was kind of like hmm, why is he not stabilizing why is his blood sugar so low we didn't really know and then the first low was like they came in and were like this doctor no offense he's like yeah we found a mass we don't know what it is and i was like why would you say that like that mm, i guess we'll find out like came in without all the information and then just dropped that on us and i was like oh my gosh oh my gosh he has cancer that oh my gosh we're gonna die hmm. and then luckily our amazing doctor other doctor came in after that that night so it was like down and then up of like you're not gonna die we're gonna remove this it's all gonna be taken care of and then i'm like and then you know the next night was horrible and then it's like during the day i'm all pumped up and then surgery comes and i'm like he's gonna live he's gonna live he's gonna live and there was like a whole roller coaster of that day but um, every day I had to like realize it was going to turn around and then have a new fear and then get over it. But it was like, it truly wasn't my own doing. It was just God. That's all I can say. Oof. Do you feel like it was like when the surgery was successful? Did you feel like you were like, oh, okay. Or like no, when did you when kind we, of ex- okay, exhale? When we got the surgery booked, because every, because we were hoping on Tuesday, we were hoping it would be on Thursday. And then we were hoping for Friday. And then they're like, oh, the surgeon doesn't work on weekends. So you'll, it'll be on Monday. And every day I'm looking at the screen because he had an artery IV, which Ugh. monitors your blood pressure in real time. Ooh. So it goes like 170, 180, 190, 212, 215. And then something calming happens. 170, which is still really high. Yeah, wow. 160, whatever. <laughs> like, it goes up and down so much throughout the day. So I'm sitting there watching these numbers, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I read that. That's this scary. is when a stroke could happen and or your organ failure. I'm like, mm, and I'm like, okay, Chad, let's play a game. And I try to get him to, like, not look at the screen. Oh, it's ugh, that's so, so stressful. Hard. So anyway, that knowing that's happening and, not, and surgery being pushed out later and later, I'm like, every day he's closer to dying. But then when it finally got booked, that was a huge win where I was like, oh, my gosh, okay. We're, we're, and then it was just like, okay, one more day, one more day. Like, so I kept saying, you're going to blink, and it will be tomorrow night, and then it will be one more day. And then you're going to blink, and then you'll be in surgery. And then you're going to blink, and it will be over. And I was like, you're going to blink, and it will be March. And now it's June. So. Wow. And you went on your beach vacation. <gasps> That's really how, what gets me through life. I, apparently, I said this a long time ago about something else. I don't even remember that, but it's just, you're going to blink. You said it to me, and, and it haunted my entire life. Yes, because you blink, and it's over. Dad always yeah. says well, it's you blink, a year and old. you're 40. <laughs> you yeah. blink, and you're 50, and you have 11 oh, years. Yeah. 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 Wow. So, yeah, that was a huge 
turning point when they said the surgery is <clears throat> on Monday. You're booked. And they said it was at <sighs> 2 o'clock and then it was at like 9 a.m. And I was like, oh my gosh, we're like speeding up there to get Love there on time. Ah! I like got to see him for a second and then went down with him to anesthesia. And then he was like, okay, bye. And I was like, mm. oh my gosh. And then I walked out and I was like, oh my gosh, well, I didn't even really say goodbye. Like, what if he dies in there? Oh. What if that was the last time oh I saw him? Gosh. Like, I didn't really say anything because I was, but then, because I was trying not to do that because I'm like, He's going to live, so I'm not going to do that. And then as soon as he went out, I was like, what if he doesn't? Uh, And it was two hours of just, uh, okay, I'm going to, that's what I did the whole time. I was like, I'm going to go buy him a gift because I'm going to see him after this. Mm. Like, I have to tell myself that. I'm going to write him notes Mm. in the bathroom mirror when I come home because he's going to read them. Like, I'm not going to be taking these off and throwing them away one day. He's going to come home and read them. And they're still on the mirror because I wanted to, like, remember that, like, Mm. I'm doing oh, these indeed. actions because they have a meaning and they convince me and help him and like all that. So, wow. <sighs> yes, wow, I need that to is therapy. crazy. Very traumatized. That yeah, yeah, that's really. Scary. <sighs> wow. I feel like we need to rephrase this one then, actually, because it's like, what did you do to overcome it? But I think we ha- the question first would be like, what do you feel like you had to overcome <sighs> in this process? Since we talk, it's like his situation is out of your control, but then yeah. things that are like in your control happening to you, emotional things happening to you, what do you feel like you had to overcame, overcome and then what, do you, what did you do to overcome Okay, those? so I thought a lot about what other people would do in the situation for some reason of like, wow, a lot of people would probably be like freaking out the entire time, but I know, but I was like, I've got all this weird peace and then it'd be up and down, but I was like, I had to remember not to do that because if you say, you know, a lot of people would probably think this right now. Then you go, oh my gosh, wait, am I panicking about that now? So I'm like, oh, no, stop, stop, mm. stop. And then um, just, just the 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 thing to overcome was not to fill in the blanks, to mm-hmm. not go, oh my gosh, they said this, which means this. And if he's in uh. this situation, he's probably going to do that. It's like the doctor said this. That's oh. what we're doing. Why I'm not assuming anything. Ooh. I'm not. I and like we're gonna get through this. And all I had, to, I had to like. It was like the That's biggest a good one. mind workout of mm. like, don't go anywhere else. Laser Whoa. focused right here. We're going home. He's coming home. Think about Christmas. Every mm. night we, I listen to Christmas music on the way home from the hospital and be like. Aww. We're gonna all be together at home. It was like a focus exercise because I remember as soon as surgery was over, I was like, "I'm done being positive. I can't be positive <laughs> for like a year." And at Christmas, I was like, "Merry Christmas! Get out of my house!" Like I didn't want to see anyone. I was like, "I'm I'm checking out now. It's too much. It was too yeah. much." But for those That's like interesting. two for that week, really before surgery, once surgery was over, I was like, "All right, he's fine. Like I can relax." It was really that. But that week before surgery was the most mentally like. Yeah, it, but it was like exhausting, but life giving because I feel like God was pouring into me. Otherwise, I don't know how I would have done it. But yeah, it was it was so much energy put out at this one thing. That's what I had to do, though. Oh, that answers that. Then. Yeah. <sighs> do you think that answers the last one? Because I feel like no. That's the last question. What were your takeaways? Yeah. Oh, my takeaways. What did you learn? How did you grow? That's okay. Kind of the last one. What I learned was. See, it's like I want to say what I learned was I have a really powerful mind. But and it's funny because I would <laughs> laugh at myself because I would be like driving there. I'd be like, oh, gosh, I'm so positive. Most people be cracking under this pressure. And then I'd be like, hmm, remember 15 minutes ago when you were just crying, listening to that song a few miles back on the freeway? <laughs> Everything's horrible. Ah! And then I was like, yeah, I don't think your mind is that powerful. And I was like, it is truly God because I myself i'm the one that's like i'm so scared and then like i feel this peace come over me i'm like it's gonna be okay and i'm like i didn't do that because when it's me doing it and me driving the ship i'm like so first of all i learned that god is the power and i if i think that i'm the power i have to laugh at myself because i remember those moments where i I shouldn't be too proud (laughs) and then um i feel like a lot of the trials in life involve like i feel like most trials are waiting in patience of oh "Oh my gosh i I know i'm so sad i don't have a boyfriend i've been alone for years like that was the most painful long drawn out trial of my life of just like not just a boyfriend it was deeper than that of like feeling unloved and knowing i can't just throw myself at a random relationship that's not the answer i have to wait and i knew it Mm. and a lot of things excuse me your future 
trying to get pregnant, whatever. A lot of them involve yeah, waiting. Yeah, a lot of it's waiting, But yeah. this was a very strange thing that I haven't experienced, and I don't know if I've been around anyone who's experienced it on this level of like, whoa, like God is working in real time, and I didn't even know what was going on, and there was nothing to wait for. Like, before we even knew what was wrong, like, the solution was on the way, and it was like like before I could that's why before I could freak out it was already being taken care of mm. even though I did freak out a few mm. times I felt stupid the morning after because I was like why did I think that like now it's daytime it's so clear that's not going to happen I'm not gonna be a widow why did <clears throat> I think that like I don't have this long thing of waiting for treatment waiting for this which a lot of people do that's a different story but it was just a very unique bizarre situation of like letting god do his thing and letting it unfold but i feel like i it helps me now when things aren't so rapid and fast real time like sometimes in a good way i felt silly for even praying i was like me thinking that i have this power right now to change the situation that you are so clearly already shaping like me trying to put my finger on the tape while you're wrapping the present and didn't even ask me to. That's how it felt. Like, mm. you got this. Why, why am I even, like, begging you to do something when I see you doing it? Mm. That It was such a weird thing. So now when I pray, it's, like, a lot more confident because I'm like, I know you're doing it, whatever it is, and I don't even know what it is. Like, mm. y like you're taking care of everything. Mm. I don't even... It's not the asking that gets the receiving. So mm -hmm. like it does so much. Like I, I feel like I already know now that everything's taken care of. And like me worrying about it is so silly because I went through something that was so serious and I didn't have to do anything. I just had to do the operational tasks of showing up and driving there and getting this. But like I couldn't diagnose that tumor and heal it and get it out. Like that mm -hmm. wasn't my job. Mm. Like I feel like God is working through the doctor and the surgeon. I just had to sit back and wait and watch. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it just, yeah, it changed my whole life going forward because now I, I know that everything's taken care of. That's because really cool. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's powerful. I like how we all have really different themes, I feel like, for mm -hmm. all of our stories. It's really cool. So I feel like everyone will relate to, like, at least one. It'll be helpful. Mm -hmm. So that was Lisa's. Thank you. Very Thank most powerful story. Yeah, oh, that's, that's really wild. Hard. We're it's gonna go doozy. to Amy's oh, and start with what are you going to talk about? What's the topic? Um, I've never gone through anything in my life, guys. So that's what we're talking about now. Um, I just don't want to do this. No offense to anybody. It's okay. Just do um, it anyway. Well, you can pick you whichever thing to, you want to like, talk about. Tell everything. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Like, just say what you're comfortable. Summarize. Yeah. Or you can just talk about something else. Well, it's just like maybe you don't like what you I'm picked. Just, it's not even that I don't look like I picked. I just don't. You just don't want to like share this. that way. Yeah. Yeah, I get okay. it. You don't have well, to. You don't have to. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, if you don't feel comfortable, you don't, you don't have share to. It. I can go and no, you guys then I'll be annoyed. Oh. Oh. I'll just figure it out. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So do what? you? Do you? What do you yeah. want to talk about? I am going to talk about something I've talked about on our YouTube. And it's like struggles with OCD tendencies and anxiety. Mm. Now, what? I'm just, just ignore me. No offense. Anyway. <laughs> you mean ignore so, your tears. Yes. <laughs> I'm just annoyed because I don't want to be emotional because it's not well, even, I don't feel that emotional about it's it. It's okay. It's or okay. Do. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's mean. not about the situation. It's like you're just stressed about talking yes, about it. Yes, exactly. It's not about it's the, the actual the thing. Nugget. Yeah. It's about the lies. And yeah. so I'm really annoyed. Anyway. Well, mm. just don't be hard on yourself. Just let yourself live. <laughs> it's just so dumb. Anyway. It's not dumb. No, it's not dumb, but it's just annoying that I'm stressed. But okay. whatever. That's okay. That's basically what we're annoyed. talking about. It's about stress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We're talking about you. stress. So then what okay. is your and what was your low point is where we start? Um, okay. Well, so basically I've had this kind of um vibe of like uptightness you know a spirit of the uptight uh, passed upon me from childhood <laughs> i've just never been very chill because i've always had this like overarching like fear in a lot of ways of like just random things like i had a lot of struggle with um like anxiety of like not being able to sleep as a kid mm. and it was very strange and i didn't know it was like a common thing until later in life that a lot of kids a lot of kids <laughs> go through that like mm. um so basically just like growing up it's like this feeling of like 
you can't trust like your mind to like work and it's Mm. i think a lot of a problem i've had lately with like the westernized view of mental health which once again this is my take on it so like if you don't have the same take like we're good but like Mm -hmm. i think that it's it like it makes you feel like your brain is broken like oh there's no reason why something's wrong with you something's wrong with you just because you're wrong mm. just because like you're broken you just have like, your broken defect. brain yeah like you're just like oh my brain is not there's no reason that i would have really bad anxiety and ocd tendencies it just happens no to in my opinion to myself i know my like life my story but whatever so basically i it's just like this intense like rumination on things and my parents always would like kind of make fun of me for it mm. but in like a it wasn't like a rude well it was rude but it wasn't like intentionally rude it was, like it was joking, more like a joke but they didn't realize, they didn't realize like, like how hard feelings. it was yeah on you, because actually. nobody actually yeah. understood what i was like going through because mm-hmm. yeah. like it's not saying that anyone really understood how bad it was and yeah. i didn't understand how bad it was either mm. because it's like your brain just can't get off a certain track like you try to stop it, to think about something else, to do something else, to like do all these things, but it just won't stop. And at that point, it's like you feel very unsafe in your own brain. Mm-hmm. You feel like you yeah. can't like live, like you're not like, like your brain isn't working properly because it's like, it won't get off it, Napoleon, you know? It's <laughs> like, there's this one track of like, and it's the dumbest things, no offense to my brain, that it fixates on. And it's like, Oh, fixating on like, oh, my fish being sick, uh, recording this guitar thing, like getting sick, like anything like that. And it won't stop it, even though it's not that it presents a great danger to me. It, my brain thinks that it does. And it's not a physical danger, but more a mental danger. Mm. And like there have been many nights where I'll wake up every few hours or every hour just like thinking about something or like. Mm. And it won't just, like, stop. And it'll go for literally days. And, like, I am very grateful, though, because I guess, yeah, that's the lowest point was probably the – it's just been a giant low point until, like, a year ago. Mm -hmm. Or, like, less than a year. Yeah. The thing that, like, turned it around, which is your next question, right, Mm -hmm. is um, (laughs) – sorry. Leading yourself through the interview. Yeah, no offense. I'm leading this interview now. Um, It is because – okay – so I was like, okay, what is wrong with my brain? Like, why is this? Because I was like, oh, it's just anxiety. Mm. And then Christina told me that she thought that I have OCD thought tendencies. Is that last year? Yeah, which is something that when you. When I got diagnosed with OCD, I'm like, Amy, you yeah. definitely have OCD. <laughs> and I, because, okay, the, like, cultural view of OCD is like, ah, I just wash my hands too much. OCD. Yeah. Ah, I'm so clean. OCD. <laughs> I'm so organized. Ooh, OCD. Got, ooh. Yeah, it's like OCD like. And then it's like, <laughs> yeah. bro, okay, like, I get it. Those are real symptoms of OCD, but it's not, like, just that. And so, because I thought that was all it was. OCD mm-hmm. is, like, suffering. Yeah. It's and like a I suffering think, disorder. Yeah, that, you like, called it the OCD gods. Yeah, I, I always say the OCD, because I have OCD, and it's like the OCD gods. It's like these, like, militant, like, dict- dictatorial voices in your head that yeah. you can't get away from. They just, like rule your yeah, life yeah and such that's a bad not way. something that people like bring up it's just mm-hmm. like haha i had to straighten these pens yeah out. people don't understand it in culture and it's like much. and i get it that's like a real like thing of it but i think yeah. a lot of because it's so colloquially used as a term it's like mm-hmm. no one really knows what it actually means like in the mental side of it like there's a yeah. lot of like if you don't have the physical side like the physical things of it which i don't have then you wouldn't think that you had that. You just think you had yeah, anxiety. There's, there's you multiple. Have, like, physical. Yeah, there's yeah, multiple I've types. never been the person that needed to like straighten everything or like, do everything. Check things, touch yeah, the unless off. I'm super stressed just and the med- something oh, is messy, then it like really hurts my I brain. Think it was called pure O O C D yeah. is what she um, told me. Yeah. Which that I was like, that's Amy. Yeah, and so then I didn't know what to do because I was like, I had been trying to figure out how to deal with anxiety, but that's not what I was dealing with. Mm-hmm. I was having anxiety because of like OCD type rumination. And so then I um, was like, okay, if Christina thinks that this is a thing, this makes sense to me as to why it's not just anxiety, because I know what anxiety is, and this is not just anxiety. Like, it's a whole other thing that I'm like, don't know what to do with. So then I, um, I have this, oh, I was trying to think of the word. I basically outsourced um, 
try to find a therapist to Catherine. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Kath, I think I need someone that does like something to do with OCD because I've done traditional therapy of like how to process things, how to deal with depression and anxiety. And like, it helps a lot, but it's not like, I never been able to get a hold of the like mental like thought patterns that I was experiencing. I can't believe no therapist ever noticed that because I feel like as soon as I yeah. learned what it was, I instantly knew that. I'm like, I feel like they should have known that. Well, the yeah. Same. I feel like it would have been obvious to see. It should have been, but maybe I didn't talk really about it that much though. I just, it's just another example of how therapists, it doesn't mean they're going to be amazing just because they are a therapist and why if one doesn't work out really well, go see another because they might be way better. Don't be like, oh, a therapist didn't see this or whatever. So that's, yeah. Well, now that I'm looking back that's at what it, is. I feel like I never really expressed what the how it, I was doing in that way. Yeah, it was just like, oh, I'm just yeah. anxious yeah. about that. Yeah, they only it's just know like, oh, I'm anxious them. about this thing. It's not like, oh, right. I literally cannot stop thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, because it really ramped itself up with the Pangea. Mm-hmm. Um, Lord knows. So, Kath found so, you? So, I outsourced my research to Kath, old Kathy Lee, and I had to write me a message and everything to, like, send to people because I was like, I need to see, well, Lauren told me I need to see someone. If I ever want a boyfriend, uh, look at all yeah. this collectively. Oh, oh. Lauren said, "Look, if you're gonna be in a relationship, you, you need a, a good boyfriend. therapist." And I said, "You're right." So then I outsourced to Kathy Lee, and then unfortunately Hoda was not available. <laughs> oh then, my gosh! <laughs> so then I got this great oh. therapist who actually like works with OCD, and it changed my actual like changed my life and my brain what like the, the way oh. that i work is completely different oh, yay. because i already you have an understanding you. now i already knew how to work through deeper issues of like depression like i told her about how i wasn't in therapy for a year and i was really deeply depressed for a period of time but i pulled myself she's like you really you did that and i was like yeah i mean i know how to deal with those kinds of things like deeper emotional issues but this whole like thought Mind pattern track. yeah it's so just like you didn't not have any tools working. for this yeah right? yes and so then she taught me how to deal with it wow. and Love like it. actual things to do to like stop ruminating or to interrupt the rumination or to figure out and like the biggest thing that i learned is that it's never <laughs> about the nugget it's about the lies you know mm-hmm. what i mean guys it's always about something that i never thought it was about mm-hmm. so like the example i use is like <laughs> it just sounds so dramatic, which, once again, guys, I have a fear of being dramatic. So okay. you're fish. But that's okay. Yes! <laughs> I feel like a lot of women, it's like you hear women say that all the time. Well, yeah. I don't want to be dramatic. Yeah, I, I don't, don't want to be too much. much. Co- I don't want to be dramatic with the giant coat. I love being dramatic. <laughs> but I love the drama of my giant think coat now. Just them existing is too dramatic. Yeah. And I like, them breathing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so um, what I realized is like, okay, the example that I'm going to use is like, I'll get very stressed about different things and I'll kind of create like a whole little storm. And then one thing that I was like obsessing over, which, you know, I'm trying to be a good like fish owner and I love my fish. Oh my I've had him for 15 months. Wow. And Go you. Don't be too excited. He's you know, on his way out. He's, oh no. <laughs> but we love him. Anyway, Jack had like a bunch of stuff going on and I was like researching it and I could not stop obsessing over it. Like I'd be laying in my bed and then I'd be like, I'm gonna do a fish bath, it's gonna be fine. And then I'd gonna do a fish bath, it's gonna be fine. Oh. Like every two seconds, like it just would not stop. And then I realized like, oh, I'm not stressed about Your fish. this fish. <laughs> Even though I am, I love my yeah, fish. Yeah. I don't want it to die. Like I love my fish, but like, <laughs> I'm stressed about being a horrible person because I can't take care of a fish. I'm stressed about being a complete failure because I can't take care of a fish. I'm stressed about uh, the like these deep core wounds. I'm stressed about being a bad person because I can't take care of a fish. I'm stressed about being connected to something that is not doing well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And so once I learned how to do that, it really like changed things. Because then I, when I realized that, I was not like I was I stopped obsessing about the fish you know mm-hmm. not that we we take deeper. care of him yes but it like it was so much different than I it was so different than I thought and like the way that it's like changed my life is so profound because I can actually like feel good again like I feel for the first time like I have control over my brain in many mm. ways like some days I don't but that's okay because I know how to get 
over it, you know, and I know how wow. to like work through it. But like, <clears throat> I don't like the feeling of like that. And I hear people saying this and I like, it makes me so sad because I understand it. It's like, there's something just wrong with my brain. Like I need to do the, like this thing. Like I just, it's just, it's just my brain. It's nothing like external. It's nothing deep. No, it's not like, to me, it's like, it's not just your brain. It's like the things that you're afraid of makes sense you are not mm. just this over dramatic person you would always that find doesn't something make sense instead yes. of like oh i just have an obsession with my fish you're like no i have some real yeah. pain going on that i yeah. want that i can address it's now. a trauma thing it's like i'm not scared of getting sick from lauren i'm scared of social exclusion and wow. failure and like that's letting really people down and all these different things like so you can either focus on those is. which are really painful so you know why yeah. your brain want to ignore them or you can yeah. just focus on sickness and not wanting to get sick and that's kind of an easier thing to focus on in a way to yes. stomach but then it's not easy because it's ruining your life but then once you, you zoom know? out you're like oh that's so like okay yeah it's like social exclusion for a week like it's okay you can yeah. handle that like all these different things and so i realized like mm. that's more it Love and it. like because yeah i always used to make a plan but then I'd ruminate on the plan but that's the thing is like when I'm ruminating on a plan or something, I just don't want to feel thing. Yeah. or I just don't want to feel an emotion. It like, makes sense. I don't think I should feel this way because I have a plan about something, but it's just like, oh, you're just scared. Mm, it's okay to yeah. be scared of something. I once read okay. something about OCD that I thought was really profound and it said um, people who struggle with OCD generally um, have a great amount of caring for their loved ones because a mm. lot of it is connected to other people and your relationships yeah. and being afraid of losing something and once I learned that it was kind of like I read something that said like people that struggle with anxiety um, generally are very compassionate it's like you care too much and I feel like OCD is really yeah. similar it's different but similar in that way well it just comes I think from a lack of feeling in control Yes. And you have to be the in control safety. of things. You feel desperately unsafe all the time mm. well, but then you, you can oh. figure out how to feel safe but yeah you definitely answered our last one and we do need to learn so yeah, yeah. that was a great one thanks for sharing what did you learn and how see, did you grow I love yeah. how it's all different topics very different themes okay, okay so I really, let's get to yeah. yours okay was, so let me say this is not my most devastating failure worst obstacle of my life that's true yeah but very dramatic language it's a, it is something that was very difficult for me which I called the sleep crisis of 2021 oh yeah, you know, like I to name things. The sleep <laughs> crisis. It was what? so horrible. I remember. So this. this is like, in recent times, the worst time of my life. So this was like sleep two As months. As Lisa was saying, she just said something about sleep. What'd she say? I don't. I something she said sweet sleep. sleep, and then you did that face. Earlier, yeah. it was earlier. It's yeah, all yeah, connected. Yeah. It was the end of the So, so your low point okay. is that we get into. So basically, for two months, August. In September, two whole months, That's I couldn't sleep because I was so anxious. Mm -hmm. And that, like, so a lot of people I know, like, don't sleep that much. Like, oh, they're a student. They pull all-nighters all the time. It doesn't really affect them. But for me, I've always been able to sleep. You know, I've always had yes. anxiety, but it never caused me to not be able to sleep in. Like, I was mm. always someone that could sleep till, like, 10, 11, 12. Like, oh sleep, 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 sleep. Even if I couldn't fall asleep, I would stay asleep for a while mm. so in this time i don't know the whole thing was the low point well every single day was the low point mm -hmm. of waking up no matter what time i went to bed a lot of times i couldn't fall asleep so i would fall asleep like midnight 1 a.m and every single morning i wake up at five or six oh, every morning and wow. not just like oh i'm awake like with crazy anxiety like Ugh. not quite like a panic attack but like Pounding heart. Anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. Couldn't fall back asleep. And I would just sit there literally just in terror, feeling like I'm going to throw up. A lot of mornings I did throw up. Like Ooh. just not knowing what to do, trying to like, oh, maybe let me like write out my feelings and I'll feel better. Do this or that. But I just couldn't do anything. Like no matter what I did, it didn't change anything for a really long time. And it was to the point like... I was so stressed about everything. Like, this was the time when I think both of I was you say, guys. This is the time when us three were trying to doggy we paddle out of the toilet, doggy, as I yeah, said. Yes. Like, we were toilet. leading the band ourselves. Yes. Without both of them. you were like overlapped on your maternity leave. And it this like, was like August and September last so year. So much extra stuff on me. And you guys do what I'm talking about me. <laughs> and it was just so stressful. And 
I had no one to lighten the mood, aka them. They oh, yeah. lighten the mood. Nobody <laughs> lightened the mood. We were not lightening the not mood. Not one mood was like. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't, I literally didn't do anything like extra oh. with my life for those whole two months. All I did was the absolute like bare minimum that was necessary to continue with my life. Like mm -hmm. getting the work done that was like absolutely essential and eating and I was so not hard. sleeping <laughs> yeah nothing else and i just felt like a zombie every day and it was so scary because i was like i can't survive like this Ugh. like i can't like and it felt like kind of what you were saying like like i'm broken like something's wrong with me like like i feel like i can't even like hold down a job and mm -hmm. like just like do basic things like I can't keep my room clean I can't like hang out with friends really I can't even sleep like it was so scary and nothing that I did changed it like I've had anxiety before but just not like that where I couldn't sleep I never dealt with that and I was just exhausted all day and I just mm -hmm. felt like there was nothing that I could do so it was just so scary. And I literally just dreaded every day. Cause I was just like, I'm gonna be a zombie again. How many get this done? How many get that done? Like, and then just feeling like a failure every day. So I was just like, I can't even like do basic tasks. It's mm. so crazy. Cause that's literally exactly how I felt with Barrett when I was in the throes of postpartum depression, anxiety, OCD, and it was so strong and I wasn't getting any it's sleep. So it was literally exactly what, what you said. I'm like, how am I gonna function? And then I'm supposed yeah. to take care of him. I wish I could just lay down. That's exactly how I yeah, felt. Yeah, and so every night I would come home from work and just lay in my bed and watch TV the whole night. I would do literally That's basically nothing what I else. Was trying to do the whole time, and I still, no matter how much I rested, I was never rested. Yes. Always exhausted, just like a zombie through the whole day. Oh, and I did wow. feel like a failure was one of the biggest yes. things that I felt during yeah, that whole so time. Yeah, so much like yeah. shame. Yeah, yeah. and then, and it's t terrifying because you do feel like you're like broken and like you're almost you're just so like you're dying, helpless. Yeah, because like, your body is like, please get sleep, and it does feel like well, you're dying. and it's like I think about the future. I guess that was kind of the low point, really. I think about the future, and I was like. Am I do this forever? Yeah, I was like, how yeah. can Is it I ever do gonna change? anything? Like, yes. like I would think like, how can I ever do another like project like on my own, like my solo it's stuff? Like I forever. can never do that again. I'm like, how can I like have a child to like have a husband? Like I can't even Function. just like, I can't even take care yeah. of myself. I literally yeah. can't. That so how can so I take true. care of someone else? And that was, I guess the low point of just feeling like, no hope for the future like i'm just trapped in this horrible existence where i can't fix yes. it before wow. we're gonna get to the turning around <laughs> that's the next question before we get into it i want what you said is really important because that's something i learned i think it was in therapy during that time was that one of the things that really screws you over in the moment is when you apply your moment right now to the whole future yeah. wait, wait but let me finish are you gonna though. say that just oh, wait that 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 <laughs> yeah well i Okay, yeah. So anyway, my turning point then. So I was in therapy with this really good therapist, but who I was scared of though, because I felt bullied by her. But <laughs> oh, she yeah. didn't really bully me. She's just one of those people that's very straightforward, and I'm so sensitive that it's just so hard. Like I'm telling this emotional thing. I'm like, man, do this, and she's like, mm, kind of like, don't do that. This is what you should do instead. It's like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm a failure. But really, <laughs> what? turned this around for me maybe this isn't exactly what you said but i just want to say mine first <laughs> was she kept telling me like you're not giving yourself enough credit so first off she gave me a lot of like coping strategies of how to deal with the anxiety like do not just lay in your bed thinking like oh i just need to lay here and it'll go away you need to get up it doesn't matter if it's early in the morning you need to get up and like go for a walk you need to do these breathing exercises you need to take action because you just laying there is just prolonging so your anxiety yeah. oh. so she gave me i had like a list of like 10 tools That's that like i could go did, through basically. and she was saying like you're not giving yourself enough credit you don't think that like that's what is making you so terrified is feeling like you can't get through this but you can you literally have like 10 different things you can do mm. to get through it and Oof. to handle it and you are still like living every day and getting stuff done like you're not doing 
you're not doing the bare minimum and being like this lazy loser. You're doing the complete maximum. Like you're doing like the most Mm -hmm. that you can do. Yeah. And like, I don't know, I guess the turning point was just like applying those coping skills that she gave me with the anxiety. And then actually telling myself instead of that thing of like, oh, I can't handle this. I can't do this. How am I gonna do that? How do we do that? I can handle this though. I can handle being tired in the day. I can what handle it. What made you it. say that? She to made be able me to say, say that. I can after because I can't. Because she made me realize that with the coping skills, like she like changed your mind. Yeah, because I was like, well, I guess that makes sense. Like she's like, you have things to do. You can actually handle Oof. this. Like stop saying oh, you can't handle it. Like, okay. Sorry. <laughs> when did you see her? Drop again. When? At what point in this did you start to see her? I was seeing her the whole time, but I oh, wasn't okay. necessarily talking about this the whole time. It happens. <laughs> talking about other <laughs> things. So, yeah. So, I guess that's really what it was, is like getting a strategy and then believing I can handle this. There are things I can do because that mindset of I'm helpless, I'm trapped, there's nothing I can do, that's really what was killing me. It wasn't yes. even the lack of sleep. Like. I was sleeping enough to survive. It wasn't like one hour, but that fear of like, oh no, I'm gonna die, I can't handle this. That was like really what was killing that me. That takes so Sleep much anxiety. energy. Yes. Sleep anxiety I've is had that so, since scary. Was so scary. Where she starts sleeping through the night and then you're like, but I'm not gonna rest, oh my gosh. And then you're like, wait, now I'm not falling asleep. Oh my gosh, the whole night's going to I'm waste. And then yes. she keeps sleeping through the night and you don't. Because and it's now like, you know I felt as a child. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah so then the yes i guess my takeaway yeah. from that is like what did you learn how did you grow yeah you know? it's like i learned to stop selling myself short mm. and to kind of i think similar to kind of what both of you guys were saying or at least have said to me about like with like with your ruminating like and with your in the hospital like focusing on what you actually want to think about like i can't Mm. just go down these spirals of like oh what if this what if that what if that i have to like keep reminding myself like i have to like build myself up of like i can do this like here is the evidence that i can do it i went through before and i survived it though i handled it Mm -hmm. and i have coping skills like that's like the biggest thing really is like just knowing i have things to do it's not i'm not trapped with nothing to do like I have a therapist who gave me things to do. I can do them. So Mm. I kind of apply that to a lot of things now of just like telling myself, I can, I can, I can handle this. I can Mm -hmm. do this because it's true. It's true. Like looking at evidence, I can handle things. Yeah. Because like you started sleeping again eventually. But then it's like my whole life really before that and during that, it was just this constant stream of like, I can't handle this. I can't do this. I can't do this. Can't, can't, can't. So just, I guess, having that confidence like I can. So and give myself evidence. Yeah, I'm curious about that. Was there something in particular that you were like, that helped you start sleeping again, do you think? Or was it just kind of a culmination of becoming more mentally healthy? That well, it sort of- I think what happened was that my life calmed down a little bit. Like mm. we, you guys came back and started doing more stuff with the band and like mm-hmm. it wasn't so busy. And also I was getting better at sleeping with, my, like I was getting, I was able to fall back asleep with my like coping strategy. So it made me less scared. Okay. I'm like, so, so it would be like, I'd still maybe wake up, but I would fall back asleep in like 20, 30 minutes instead of three hours. Okay. So it wasn't so scary anymore. Right. So then it was like, the better I got at like, dealing with it then the less scared i was and the less anxiety Mm -hmm. that i had Mm -hmm. and then the more my life calmed down then it was like just like a ripple effect yeah Yeah. okay that's cool we kind of i don't know if we said this out loud but i think we all thought everything was just going to instantly fall apart basically and when it was just us in charge we kind of thought like oh my gosh everything's gonna fall apart everyone's gonna leave immediately and then each day that things didn't completely fall apart we're like okay i think that was a thing that happened for all three of us without us maybe realizing yeah. we're like okay everything's still hasn't fallen apart it's it's going fine okay maybe it is gonna be fine because it was a brand new thing for us that we had never experienced yeah, it's so a lot we didn't have anything we didn't have any like past experiences to draw upon yeah like going through it again i'd be like oh we've been through this yeah but this first time i was like what's gonna happen we've it never was been through wild. this we don't know what we're doing yeah we lost our like 
like fun people. We were not, and, and we, and were, we not were extra not fun. We I just were, were, like, oh, some of our meetings, we were just sitting there like, <laughs> cool. and I was like, and I was like, it was not. like sleeping through it, them too, though, because I was so anxious. It was not right. It was, but I'm glad we have that um, experience now. Yeah. So we can say we know we've been through it. It's gonna be fine. We got We're good. We got through it. We're yeah. all good. Wow. I was gonna say, um, Lauren mentioned something that um, is a turning kind of not a turning point like a a thing that I learned that was really important that can really help you out if you're doing this which everyone does this I feel it's when you start going from not to never you start to really screw yourself over so when you say I'm not sleeping right now or I'm not whatever and then you go to never and you say oh my gosh I'm never gonna Mm. whatever this again whatever so it's like if today was like this, every day is going to be like this. My whole life is going to be like this. And then you look forward into the next few months and you think about it being exactly like today. You look forward in the next years and you think of it being exactly yeah. like mm-hmm. today or tonight. And you put that on every single day coming up. Then when you look into your future, it looks horrible. Yeah. It looks yeah. bleak, but it feels real that yeah. your future is going to be like that. Because yeah. you're like, it's like that right now. So why wouldn't it be like that in 300 days from now? Why not? Yeah. Why wouldn't yeah. it? It hasn't changed. In the last 50 days in a row so why would it change tomorrow yes. but life is like that where it can mm-hmm. be the same for 50 days and then suddenly change drastically on the 51st yes. day or maybe for a couple years yeah. but it does always things change things are some always point. changing yeah, around and for us. me it's also like i can change things though like just because exactly. things have been this way 50 days and maybe I've tried 50 things to change it it's like there's still more i can do like i don't want to like make myself helpless in my own mind of like oh there's nothing to do there's always like something else to try something else to do and i guess believing like there's Mm. always a solution though like and maybe Mm. it's not what you thought it would be though yeah and something i always tell myself when i'm in my mental health is in a really bad place is like I know I was happy before at one point and I know I'm like, I'm going to be happy again at one point. It's not going to be like, like I tell myself that all the time when I'm in a bad place, the way I feel right now is not how I'm going to feel forever. Mm -hmm. Even though it feels like it's going to be this bad forever. That it, my life has been like this. Wow. Everyone's my life brain is like wishes this. it could do that more. Often. And I'll just. Well, I, I don't know that I really believe that's it in the good. moment, but no, I keep good. saying it over and over. Like that's really good. I know I was happy, and I I'm gonna get back to that. It's just a moment. It's not forever. And yeah. I yeah. I tell myself so that's that a over really good and over thing to do. See, I, I usually can do that with something I've been through before, but with this, it's I so never been through before. So it's like yeah. I don't know if I could ever be happy again because like, I didn't even no do this. no past experience yes. to draw on. Okay, but, this yeah. is really good to lead into Sister Spotlight. So let's go to that. It will kind of be a continuation of this. And every week we do the Sister Spotlight segment where one of the girls gets the spotlight on them. We have Get Real with Christina, Sappy or Sassy That's with Kath, Lisa's Corner, Amy's Current Crisis, and Lauren's Take. And this week <laughs> the sister is da 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 me. Like the harmony. Oh, that was God. Interesting. Okay, so I'm just going to get to it right now to wrap up this episode. So I didn't know what everyone's going to talk about, obviously, but this went perfectly with it. And my theme is don't give up on yourself. Don't Something give I've up done many a time, but then you got to ungive up on yourself. So let me yes. explain this. So I think we, everyone as humans, we have a tendency to give up on ourselves and the problem is especially when you don't realize you gave up on yourself and oh. sometimes we'll just give up on ourselves in our entire life just kind of give up and just live in that i think it happens to a lot of people at there's a point in your life and you may not realize it or you may look back and realize that you real that you'll see i gave up myself then this thing happened and it was like heartbreaking it was hard whatever it was it confirmed that i am a failure i am whatever and i gave up in that moment i gave up on this thing i really wanted to do i gave up on the person i wanted to be i gave up on something or maybe all of myself basically and i've realized this about myself as well in different ways we were talking about this um us as a band and like our dreams and like certain things we gave up on that we wanted to un give up on we actually realized that so i here my challenge that i'm presenting to you guys is to look at your life and to ask yourself like did i give up on myself when did i do that how did i do that and to decide that you're not going to anymore that you're going to turn it around so let me get into that and then we'll be done and wrapped up basically 
when you, I love to go back to childhood, when you were born, you were born and at some point very, very soon you started screaming and Mm. you yell, you cry, you scream, you let it out, you ask for what you want. You express your feelings. You're mad, you let the world know. You're sad, you let the world know. You're hungry, you let the world know. But then throughout life, things happen to us. Most of the time, they're not our faults at all. Things happen to us, we experience things, and it shapes our worldview and our view of ourselves. And we can get really down on ourselves, and we can start seeing ourselves as a failure, a mistake. Oof. There's something deeply wrong with me. I'm bad, things like that. And that can become your identity and we can, you know, put ourselves out there, have hope and have these big goals and dreams for, you know, could be a career thing, could just be a, the person you want to become, could be something about relationships, could be anything. It's not just always about career, could be anything. And then you get heartbroken because that's what life is. Life is a series of like ups and downs of challenges, victories, defeats. That's what it is. When you try for things, you're going to fail at things. You don't try anything, you won't fail at anything. You'll also be miserable. But you know, failures can be really miserable as well. And when we're kicked down in that failure on the ground, that's the moment where we can, unfortunately, we can make a lot of decisions and come to a lot of conclusions about ourselves that really hurt us in the long run that's when we decide like wow you shouldn't have tried that you were an idiot for putting yourself out there that's so embarrassing how could you do that well you're just a failure don't do that again that was horrible and in those moments we can make decisions about ourselves that can last a lifetime if we don't revisit them and turn them around so i want to say to you if you realize like you're selling yourself short like you were saying that right you're selling yourself short you're saying i can only do this i'm only this i'll only ever be this i'll only ever have this whatever and you're selling yourself short you're down on yourself all the time you're just repeating these negative things and i get it i've been there so many times and that's just where your life is your life doesn't have to be like that you weren't born like that i'm telling you you weren't you you as a little baby little toddler you weren't just saying like i'm a failure i suck everything's horrible you weren't doing that from day one it happened over time and it's something that you can change so i want to say do not give up on yourself You can have temporary defeat and recognize it, temporarily give up on yourself, but don't let it be permanent and don't live there. You gotta get yourself out of that place. You have to pick yourself up and you have to choose. Unfortunately, I know it's hard, but you have to choose it. You have to say, I'm going to have some faith here. I'm gonna have faith Mm -hmm. in God. I'm gonna have faith in myself. I'm gonna have faith in tomorrow. I'm gonna have faith in whatever. I'm gonna have some faith. I'm gonna choose to have some hope in this moment. And I'm gonna hope that tomorrow could be different. I'm gonna hope that I could do something different. I could be something different. I could find something new to try that might change something. But remember, when you try something, that doesn't mean that's gonna be the one thing. You have to tell yourself, like, if I have to try a thousand times, I'll keep trying. And if I get down on myself at time 100, I'll take a second, I'll be down and I'll get back up. Don't give up on yourself though. Take a moment and get back up. You have to get back up. This is kind of like the you're worth it speech that I do when we're on tour. Um, It's like a mini version. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, If you want more of that, you could search that. Christina, you're worth it speech. Pretty good ones. Go there on YouTube. You can look. Some people like listen to them when they're working out. I've had a bunch of people tell me that. Oh my god, that's so so funny. So funny. So we're gonna leave it there. And I would like to say that a lot of things you said also can be found in our song "Believe in You." Yeah. You should listen to our song "Believe in You." Guys, our music is so good. Like the hopeful ones for those moments. I will put on our songs. I listen to them. And who told you? That's another great one. You know, I listen to our songs during the sleep crisis of 2021. I am enough. I listen to our songs at my lowest point. I'm enough. You're worth it. I'm like, it. Oh, I think I listen to I'm enough. I need inspiration. Uh, postpartum a lot. Who told you? Oh, I did too. Who yeah, told I you? I listen to I'm pretty enough. Pink. During I believe in you. I listen to that a lot. Postpartum. Our dad listens to Pretty Pink. Apparently. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, our dad he really does. He it. loves it. Isn't that cool? So okay, so that's it, <laughs> guys. That was a great episode. I think we provided a lot of good, like, inspirational stuff. I'm very pleased. I really hope that helped you guys <laughs> out because we went there. 
um, in these two episodes. And if you didn't, um, I don't know if it's this one or the last one that's not fully on YouTube, but whatever one it is, if you want to see the, well, no, I'd be saying this at the end. This would not be on YouTube, so you can't. <laughs> so never mind. It, was the last one. it was on YouTube? Was it on YouTube? Oh, not on YouTube, the last one. This one's fully on YouTube. Oh, okay, oh, good. Yeah, okay, yeah. so YouTube, hello. If you want to see the full episode of the last one, Join Patreon, watch the whole thing. If you feel like you need that in your life, that's a good thing to do when you feel really down is just change the um, content you're consuming mm. to stuff that's like more uplifting. So get as much as you can in you. Music, like we said, and these podcast episodes, whatever. All right, you guys. We'll see you in... Oh, wait, I know what the next episode is. Let me tell you what it is so you can get excited. <laughs> We'll see you in the next episode, which is going to be... I thought I was about to go get some water. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Woo! Questions! I'm excited Yay! for that one. See how we do. Okay, that's going to be a fun one. We'll see you in that one. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Cimarelli podcast. Follow Cimarelli on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube. You can also find Cimarelli on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. 